uh, burning question of the week. Okay. <laughs> there it is. All right. Got so it. last week we went uh, deep down in a rabbit hole of the bullshit with the size to size matter in professional wrestling. And so this week I wanted to like fucking run as far away from something controversial and serious yeah. and do something more fun this week. Okay. Even though no matter what the fuck I do or say or make a list of the internet wrestling community, the IWC, mm -hmm. the heel Josh's, the fucking infamous opinion is they're all going to fucking Chris Griffin. They're all going to come at Yeah. Chris Griffin. <laughs> I don't know his real name, but uh, yeah. I fucking he annoys me so bad. I'm, I'm I don't want to duet with these people anymore. I don't want. I don't want and to. You fucking, don't want to duet with them. They want to do. I know. With I've you. never done a duet. I've never done. I've never used another. Well, that's not true. Because I've talked shit. I just don't duet. Yeah. I don't duet them. I do talk shit. So I have used other people as a stepping stone. So yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie about that. All right. But fuck all that shit. Okay. Let's get into this. This week's burning question is. It's 2022. You're given an unlimited budget. You, Tony Khan is my new dad. No, not Tony Khan. Khan daddy. Don't want him. What's the, Shad Khan, Sean Khan. Sean Connery? Fuck, I don't know his name. I forgot his name. Tony Khan's daddy. Daddy Khan. Daddy Khan. Daddy like Khan <laughs> has adopted me, and he's told me, notorious nerdy D, here's a blank check. I need you to go out and put together a roster of wrestlers, and all of a sudden, WWE and AEW, they don't exist anymore, right? So I have free yeah. reign. I can offer up anybody. Basically, what I'm getting at is I wanted to make a list of my 10 wrestlers that I would start a professional wrestling company with. Okay. Not necessarily who I think are the best wrestlers. Not necessarily who I think are my favorite wrestlers. Okay. This was 10 wrestlers that I thought if I was starting a company today, these are the wrestlers that I would start my company with. And I'm going to go from one to 10 because I think it probably starts off relatively obvious, obvious and safe. Right? So number yeah. one, if I'm starting a wrestling company and I have an unlimited budget and I can pick anybody and I go, who is, who is the guy that they all come to see? Right? Mm -hmm. It's Brock Lesnar. Big daddy Brock. It's Brock Lesnar. And I've never even been, I'm, I'm, I'm a newly, newly cemented Brock Lesnar fan. So it's not like I've loved him forever, but after seeing Brock Lesnar in person this last time where we were uh, on the oh, floor, that was so cool on the floor at SmackDown, the, he's a fucking behemoth, right? Huge. When Pat McAfee talks about, that's the guy you send to go fight the aliens. Yeah. That's the guy you go send to fight the aliens. Yeah. That's the alpha fucking male of our species. That's the guy that proves everything I say about size. Mm -hmm. Not going to say any more about size. Okay. Number two, another big guy, Roman Reigns. I'm definitely going Roman Reigns because he is the best pure wrestling bad guy in the business. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm not saying he's the best heel. He's the best wrestling bad guy all the way around. He gets the most reaction out of the most people. Not the best on the microphone, but he is the yin to the yang, right? He's yin to the yang? Yin to the yang. Yin or yin? Yin, yin, yin. Yin, yin. Why, why, why I-N or Y-I-N-G? Y-N, Y-I-N-G, Y-A-N-G. Okay. Yin, yin. It's not yin and yang? Why did I think it was yin and yang? We'll figure the fuck out. Somebody will correct this me This is a poll. That. All right, another poll. We got a second poll for the week. All right. So I'm going Brock Lesnar one, Roman Reigns two. I'm getting the freak show, the circus. Th those are my, y'all Y'all say I'm the big size guy. That's my big size. That's my meat and potatoes. I can, I can run every pay-per-view with those two guys and the casual fans are going to fucking watch. All right. All right. Number three, we're going to, you know, number three, you got to get creative because you've got your two behemoths. Now I'm going Brian Danielson. Cause Brian Danielson to me is the best wrestler in the world. Now, yeah. my wrestling knowledge, let's let's take it into consideration, doesn't go to Japan, doesn't go all over the world. I see the I see the world through like WWE and AEW. So as far as that goes, Brian Danielson is my best all around. He's like a nine in almost everything. And probably a ten in some. Yeah. But he's good on a microphone, good in the ring, good charisma, good uh, whatever. Good good at everything, right? Yeah. 
good at everything. How he's not AEW champion right now, I don't fucking know. Seems like the biggest misstep in the world, right? All right, so I got Brock Lesnar. I got Roman Reigns. Now I can sprinkle in some Brian Danielson into that mix. Now we're going number four. This might surprise some people because I don't fucking like this guy. Mm -hmm. But he sells tickets. Okay. And when he's on, he's on. All right. CM Punk is number four. I'm starting a company. I'm going to use CM Punk the right way. Use him for his. I'm going to use him the right way. I'm going to have disgruntled, angry, ornery, curmudgeon CM CM Punk. Punk. Old C, not even old CM Punk. I'm just, I need CM Punk to go out there and and have that swagger, that that heel swagger. Not PC Punk, not PG Punk. We're not doing that, right? So with those four guys, I feel like I'm selling out every arena I go to. Every arena I go to, I'm selling out those the arena, right? Number five, here we go. We're going to swerve a little bit. Swerve it. Number five, my most important person in starting a wrestling company. Okay. Paul Heyman. Not even going to go wrestler here. Yeah. And it's funny because he's been associated with three of the top four of my guys on my, on my roster here. But I think his knowledge of the business, his ability to work a crowd, I believe, and people argue with me, but once again, casual wrestling fan, I believe he's the greatest manager of all time that I've seen, that I've seen, that I've witnessed. I haven't seen some of the older managers that people reference, but to me in my lifetime, he's the best manager I've ever seen or advocate or whatever fuck you want to call it. So I think he's invaluable now because you've got Brock Lesnar, you've got Roman Reigns, you've got CM Punk, you've got Paul Heyman, you've got interesting storylines. Yeah. You've got a lot to fucking work with there. Uh Uh-huh. All right. So then we're going to go number six. And I I like this because I think, uh, well, first of all, it's Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, the best bout machine. Uh Uh-huh. I think he poses a lot of interesting matchups with guys that I've named already, right? We've never seen Kenny uh, Kenny Brock. We've yeah. never seen Kenny Roman. True. We still haven't seen Kenny CM Punk, to my knowledge. Maybe it happens somewhere in a far-off land that doesn't exist <laughs> in my head, but we've never seen this. So yes. I think he fits in. Talent-wise, as good as Brian Danielson. Yeah. So now I've got two highly technical guys. I got two fucking behemoths of men and I've got CM Punk who is just CM, CM Punk. Punk. And when he's on, there's nobody better. Exactly. When he's on, there's nobody better. When he's off, everybody's better. That's the problem with CM Punk, right? Yeah. So now I've got Brock Roman, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Paul Heyman, Kenny Omega, number seven, Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins. Yeah. I almost went MJF here. Oh. But I still don't, I'm still not confident in MJF's ability to wrestle. I agree. I don't know if I've actually I don't know if he's a good wrestler wrestle. or not. I've seen him, I've seen him in a few matches at this point, but I've never seen him just put on an impressive match. I always feel like he's running all the time. Talking his shit, he's great. But but if I'm putting, if I'm going top 10, I'm going 10 guys. This is like, this is my first round. These are my A team. I, I don't think that MJF goes there. I think Seth Rollins does. The drip god, he's he's got he's got this kind of enigma ability to adapt and change change characters. He he's that fucking irritating guy. Uh-huh. He gets under your skin. And I feel like Kenny Omega, Seth Rollins, Ooh. there is just irritation all over the fuck. I me as like the the guy I am that gets like annoyed, I think I'm fucking annoyed by that feud. But like in the good way. Yeah. I'm goodly you annoyed. You it so much you want to keep it's on watching. like these guys are just fucking irritating, but I love yeah. it. Kenny Omega, it. Seth Rollins. I like that. I think Seth, he's young, still got uh, young wrestling. Uh, he's still got enough in the tank that he could go. And he puts on good matches. So I'm going there. Number eight. Here we go. This is where, this is where the internet wrestling community is probably going to come for me. It's Bianca Belair. That's an interesting one. Well, because you, you're going to need the, the woman superstar. And I think out of all the women, physically, she is the most gifted. Even over? She, over. Um, Becky Lynch? Physically? Yeah. Yes. 100%. You, you think that in a real fight, how long do you think Becky Lynch lasts in a real fight like, with Bianca Belair? Like 2.4 seconds? Okay. I mean, I guess you're right. I mean... 
Bianca, I, I have the strength that Bianca Becky Belair has would, in wrestling world. Bianca Belair would slap the Irish off of Becky Lynch. <laughs> That's what would happen. True, true. She'd have brown hair after that shit. All right. Um, so I'm going Bianca Belair because I, I need a, a tent. I, I need a flagpole woman wrestler, female wrestler, to kind of hang that division on. And I think Bianca's, the crowd loves her, right? She's, to me right now, she is kind of poised. She's not there yet, but she could be the John Cena of women's wrestling. I could see that. I think little girls look up to her. They love her. Mm-hmm. I don't. She's positive. I don't know how you dislike her other than if you're just kind of a D-bag, right? Yeah. Like, and you could say you could dislike her because of her skill, but I don't know as a person, she just seems kind of fun and happy. Mm-hmm. So that's my eight, right? So I got All Brock, right, Roman. Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Paul Heyman, Kenny Omega, Seth Rollins, Bianca Belair, number nine, Randy Orton. Ooh, I like Randy he's, Orton. He's the fucking utility, right? I mean, mm-hmm. the, you don't see a bad Randy Orton match. No. And so I look at my list and I go, I can put Randy in a match with any one of these motherfuckers. And it's it's going to be five star, right? Yeah. He, he's going to work with Brock. He can work with Roman. He can work with Brian. He can work with Punk. He can work with Omega. He can work with Seth. I like it. Like I can do those. I, Randy's just utilitary, man. He he just fills out that roster in a way that now you've got a little bit of everything, and and, and he can do a little bit of everything, right? Mm-hmm. And then number ten, after taking like a long look at my list, I had a lot of names. I went actually. I made a top thirty. I have a top thirty list. Okay. And I'm gonna post the top thirty list on Twitter. Right. Try and get some people to go look at Twitter. Okay. So I'll put my top 30, like my full What's roster. What's your Twitter handle? I don't, I think it's Notorious Nerdy D. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot right there. Yeah. I've changed it so many times. Let's, I believe. Uh, let's send people to Twitter. So you got to remember your Twitter handle. If it's not Notorious Nerdy D, it will be by the time the show ends. <laughs> I will go change it to that. Um, so I have a top 30 list. You can go check it out on Twitter and then we'll probably later in the week post that full list on TikTok in, in some form of YouTube video. But uh Yeah. <clears throat> my number ten, this is a wild card. I'm gonna pull a free tell me, agent. Tell me, tell me. I'm going to a free agent here. It's Bray Wyatt. Oh, I like that one. I've always loved he Bray Wyatt. He was the most misused character in WWE and I'm not gonna fuck that up. I'm gonna give him the Undertaker role. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use him in a special event kind of way he could go make movies and do those things and then i'm gonna bring him in for these big events i'm gonna bring him in for for my version of wrestlemania yeah and we're gonna do the whole spectacle with the the fireflies and and we're gonna give yes that was my give, favorite bray Wyatt. we're gonna i'm gonna give bray creative freedom to do all that weird shit that Sister he does abigail all that because it like all of that should have worked it all should have worked I think it, it even should did when we went to wrestlemania Everybody no, had no, their no, fucking 100%, lights out. But they I think just didn't nurture it enough. They 